Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at a lemma called Zorn's lemma. And what this says is that if we have a post set and we have a chain in that post set, so elements that just kind of go in a chain like this, like one is less than another one, less than another one, and so forth that every single chain in this post set, so this is like the hypothesis of the lemma here. If, um, if all of the uh, chains that we find, all of them always have an upper bound. So always have something that's bigger than everything in the chain. Um, so some upper bound, and this is true for every single chain, then there is a conclusion. That conclusion is that there's actually a maximal element in this post set, meaning that there's an element in this post set, some magical element, um, uh, call it W or something, that is bigger, um, that, um, that nothing is bigger than. So nothing is bigger than W. Okay, in the post set. So that's what the lemma is. If this is true for all chains, no matter what chain we pick, we can always find an upper bound to it, then there is an element that nothing is bigger than in this post set. So that's what Zorn's lemma is. Now let's talk about um, how or why that is true based upon um, the assumption of well ordering. So if we assume that, um, and transfinite induction. If we assume the axiom of choice, we assume then that we can well order, that all sets can be well ordered, um, as well as the existence of all these ordinals or transfinite ordinals um, that we have. And ordinals are either, the positions in a list are either successor ordinals or limit ordinals. Um, successor ordinals, meaning that um, meaning that uh, it's right after another ordinal position. A limit ordinal, meaning that um, it is the first, um, the, the, uh, the first ordinal that comes after everything before it, which if you have a well ordering makes sense because every subset has a minimum element. Now, basically it's everything that's not a successor ordinal. So all ordinals actually fall into this category being the first um, after what comes before it. But um, in particular, it just doesn't have the property of being a successor. So a limit, a limit um, ordinal is one that has that property, of course, that's not a successor. So either you have successor ordinals or limit ordinals you know, in different ordinal positions. So ones that don't necessarily have a neighbor right before it or ones that do. So these are our two different ordinals to work with, and we will need that when we encounter the process of transfinite induction um, as we go ahead and, and show the validity of Zorn's lemma based um, off of the assumption of the axiom of choice or which, is, um, which um, we're going to take in the guise of well-ordering. Since, <clears throat> since we have, since the choice function itself actually determines a well ordering on a set. Okay, so let's take a look at this and see what we can do. Um, now, in order to prove this statement, what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume um, the opposite. We're gonna do it by contradiction. So we're gonna assume that, um, that there is no maximum or peak to this post set at all, um, that this doesn't occur. So we're gonna assume, um, ass assume the opposite of this. And yet we are going to assume that this is true. So, so we're, or sorry, we're gonna assume that this is true, I meant. <laughs> okay, so kind of like what we're gonna do is we're going to be assuming kind of like a TF here. But of course, um, we know this isn't possible. In fact, this is the opposite uh, in Boolean algebra, that would be the opposite statement of, um, of the conditional implication arrow that goes this way. So, um, 
<clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to assume this and find a problem with it, which means that the implication this way will hold. Okay, so let's take a look at this and see what we can do. So we're going to assume the opposite. So what does that mean? That means we're going to assume that, um, that there is no maximum, there is no peak. Um, but we're also going to assume this, that every single chain has something bigger than it. Now, what's bigger than it can actually be inside of it. It could be the maximum of this chain. So chains could either have maximums or they could have um, or not. And if they don't, there's something larger than it and you can extend the, um, and then you, if there's something larger than it, then you could extend it, um, extend your chain if you wanted to, to a larger chain. Um, and that would just be the upper bound that's above it. So if a chain doesn't have a maximum in it, this statement right here means you can always, um, no matter what chain you have, you can always um, extend it if it's not a maximum. So if it's not a max, if there's not a maximum in the chain, then the chain is extendable to something larger. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what we have here in this particular case. We can actually take a chain and extend it, even just looking at this particular case, if we assume that we don't have a max, that the, that the, um, the upper bound isn't actually a maximum in the chain itself. Now, what about, um, what about this? What about assuming that, um, that there, this doesn't happen? Okay. So assuming that that doesn't happen, that, that there is no largest element, um, or there is no element such that nothing is larger than it, um, then that means that, uh, if we were to, that if we have a chain over here, whether it's extendable or not to its upper bound. In fact, you can always just assume that it that it goes up to its upper bound, that it has a maximum if you want. You can just take that assumption either by extending, um, by having a maximum in here or just extending it to this guy. So we have a chain really with a maximum is what we're saying. So we can kind of take all chains and extend them if we want to so that they have maximums. And then we can say, well, wait a minute, this guy can never be a complete maximum in here. So that means this chain is always extendable, even to pass that point. So every single chain is what we're saying is always extendable to another guy, always. Okay, so <clears throat> that's kind of just looking at that way. So kind of what we have is we can we start with the chain and we can keep on extending it is kind of what what we're what we've been, been saying. Anytime we have a chain, we can always extend it to another guy. So let's look at transfinite induction. We're gonna look at a case when um, we've extended it to a particular position, maybe the, and it's in an ordered list. And suppose that this position is represented by a successor ordinal, meaning that there's um, something right before it and we can always, um, and something right after it. Okay, or maybe we've extended it right up, right up before this, all right? So we've extended it to this point. Well, based upon this technique, we can always go one more, which is what we were just describing, one more position, we can always go to the next successor ordinal up. Okay, but let's take a look at the case when we've had our chain and we're extending it and, we've, and we keep on doing this, all right? And we've extended this through our all ordinal positions before a particular limit ordinal. Then, <clears throat> Okay, let's see what see what happens in this case. Um, all right, so we have a chain and it goes through here. Now this chain um, has a, by assumption, this chain has an upper bound. So there's something that's bigger than everything in this chain. Hmm, there's something bigger than everything in this chain. Well, that means, um, eh, uh, see, well, if this thing that were bigger were actually in the chain itself so far, um, then uh, then there would be a point where it stopped, and then and then there would be a next guy, which would mean that this wouldn't be a limit ordinal. So that doesn't happen in the limit ordinal case. Um, so actually, based upon this assumption, this guy actually has to be bigger than all of the things in the chain. This upper bound. So what we could do is we could just 
list the upper bound in that case, which is bigger than everything in the chain. And we could simply list it as being the um, as the next as the next guy, or we could assign it the ordinal position of this limit ordinal, and it extends the chain to that limit ordinal. We've just covered the case of successor ordinals and limit ordinals. Then from there, we could keep on going and um, and this this same basic idea, we just kind of use the idea that we can always go and whoa one more. This enabled us to, to go to the next limit ordinal. And this idea, assuming that this isn't true, assumed, um, uh, gave us wings so that we could always go to the next position uh, for successor ordinals. So that means that our chain can be extended through all ordinals. Now, this is a little bit of a problem because our post set is a set. Now a set has a cardinality, it means a class of things that it's in bijective correspondence with in terms of size, okay, or it has a bijection with. <clears throat> now, it in particular has a particular cardinality and there's an ordinal position which is the smallest ordinal position or the first ordinal position that comes um, uh, that comes after or that has uh, has that its set of predecessors has the cardinality of size p. So there's a first ordinal that has that quality where it where its set of predecessors has cardinality the same cardinality as p. So there is an ordinal in there. Now, this chain right here will pass that ordinal up um, um, because it's going through all ordinals. So it'll go even beyond it, in fact, to uh, another limit ordinal and so forth, um, even, even, um, uh, even having a higher cardinality than P. <clears throat> Meaning that, um, well, let's just kind of think about that for a second. So let's suppose that we, so we have a, so we have a chain C, okay, and inside of that C is a subset of that chain, which um, has the same cardinality as P itself, meaning that there's a bijection between C1 and P. All right, there's a biject. Oh, so there's a bijection between those two. Now. <clears throat> Knowing that there's a bijection between these two, and this is an intermediate set, actually, you can interpret the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem in the um, as actually meaning that, um, well, this actually implies that there's a bijection between there's a bijection between C and P. Except if things are have a bijection, that means they have the same cardinality. But we just showed that C in particular. Um, in fact, even if we just stopped C somewhere, if it didn't even complete it all the way through all the ordinals, we just stopped it at a higher cardinality ordinal. Um, well, that means that it, it, since it has a different cardinality, it can't have a bijection, which um, is a contradiction right there if we know that we had a C1 that came up with the same cardinality as P. So we actually have a, have a contradiction there. This contradiction is a contradiction that tells us that we cannot have, um, is a contradiction that tells us that uh, that this assumption right here we shouldn't have uh, crossed it out, but actually um, we can't have that we actually do have a maximum um, in this particular po in a post set. So we have a maximum value, um, our, our our maximum element in this post set based upon this assumption. So we have just proved uh, Zorn's lemma based upon the assumption of choice. Or, um, which enabled us to use this idea of transfinite induction and well ordering. Thanks for watching.